Hello everyone! In this video, we will introduce you to the P7 General Interface and learn how to use P7 Workflow. In the first part, we will start with general information about P7 Integration Platform. Then we will consider the most essential functions of the P7 Interface in a live demo. Let's begin with Introduction. P7 Integration Platform allows to create automated chains of various simulations, pre-post processing analyzing tool. They are called workflows. Workflows are constructed from blocks from a built-in library and links between them to set up the data flow. Blocks are highly configurable, and workflows provide an intuitive way of creating advanced data flow structures, such as cycles, conditional and parallel chains, and more. So even complex integration, modeling, and optimization tasks can be solved without writing a massive integration scripts. P7 allows you to integrate third-party CAD and CAE tools in workflows that automate design processes, making them more efficient and saving engineering time. P7 also provides its own algorithmic toolkit, so you can use it to solve many kinds of optimization problems, single and multi-objective, constrained and unconstrained, stochastic and mixed integer problems, generate designs of experiments with classical and advanced methods, including adaptive design, train approximation models using training data samples or by automatically sampling a simulation model, and reuse them as a port of workflow, perform sensitivity analysis, apply dimension reduction to high-dimensional problems, analyze previously collected data, and more. Let's switch to the P7 graphical user interface. P7 uses separate screens for different tasks, such as managing projects and files, editing workflows, running them, and post-processing workflow results. Workspace, where you can manage projects and their contents, add workflows, data files, and such. This screen opens by default when you start P7. Edit, where you can create and configure workflows. This screen is available only after you open a project. Run, where you can review workflows, make quick changes to their settings, run them, and see main results. Like Edit, Run is available only after you open a project. Analyze, where you can access database with detailed information obtained from workflow runs and post-process these results. This screen is also available only after opening a project. Each screen has its own layout detailed further. Common interface elements available on all screens are gathered in the left sidebar. The main menu provides access to general commands. The screen selector switches between screens. The issues button toggles the issues pane, which shows validation warnings and errors. The console button toggles the built-in P7 console, which shows detailed logs and can also be used as an interactive command line interface. The workspace screen opens by default when you start P7. This screen contains the file system pane, a simple file browser. Project pane shows contents of the current project. The welcome tab, the main starting screen. Create project, workflow, and report shortcuts. The open project shortcut and the list of recent project. Shortcuts to P7 documentation and guides, P7 examples shortcut. The edit screen becomes available when you open a project. When you open a workflow from Workspace, P7 switches to edit automatically. The edit screen contains the block library pane, P7 component library. Tab bar, you can open and edit multiple workflows, switching between their tabs. The edit toolbar. The view toolbar. The information panel. Workflow breadcrumbs. The context button in breadcrumbs opens workflow tree, structural overview. The main edit area, showing workflow structure. Blocks and links. Blocks are added to the workflow from the block library pane. To place a block, drag and drop it into the edit area or double-click its name in block library. To configure a block, just double-click the block to open its configuration dialog. To connect blocks, drag a link from source to target or select links from the context menu on the edit toolbar. When you have a block or link selected, the information panel shows useful details, such as a summary of the block's configuration. The view toolbar can be used to zoom the workflow, toggle annotations and automatically lay out blocks and links, switch the canvas color. The breadcrumbs and workflow tree help to navigate complex workflows with hierarchical structure. The toggleable issues pane in Edit shows workflow validation messages. 
P7 automatically validates the workflow while you edit and can warn you about block misconfiguration, missing links, and other potential problems. The main area in Edit shows base workflow structure. Main elements of a workflow are blocks and links. Blocks have named inputs and outputs called ports. Links create port connections. Hovering a block or link shows a tooltip with its details. Double-clicking blocks and links opens their properties. Optionally, a workflow can also contain text annotations. Clicking New Annotation button on the Edit toolbar adds a new empty annotation. Double-clicking an annotation begins editing text. To finish editing, click anywhere outside the text box. There is one special block type in P7, Composite, which may be understood as a sub-workflow container. Composite block can contain other blocks. Composite block works as a wrapper for a group of blocks or even another workflow and provides several special features. Select block and click Group Block button on the Edit toolbar. Insert block name. and open the block. To return to the above level, use Workflow Breadcrumbs or the Workflow Tree. To extract the blocks, click Ungroup button. Composite blocks provide several advanced functions. In particular, they allow to define parallel and cached workflow regions and to create your own custom components. Another important part of a workflow is the workflow configuration, which is opened by clicking Workflow Configuration button on the Edit toolbar. First of all, you can use it to set up port monitoring, the main method to collect data from a workflow for analysis. Workflow configuration also allows to customize the workflow's interface in Run and to add some advanced settings, such as global parameters. Let's turn attention to the workflow engine. Block receives an input data, starts a calculation, and outputs a result. Input arguments for the block can be from the other block or set as global parameters. Global Parameters panel are in Run tab. Values of the global parameters is constant for the workflow and can be changed before the workflow run. Likewise Edit, the Run screen becomes available when you open a project. In Run, you can specify workflow inputs and parameter values. Adjust monitoring settings. Start and stop workflows. Read Run logs and see some results. The Run screen contains the tab bar 1 showing all open workflows. The Run Toolbar, 2. The View Toolbar, 3, the same as in Edit. Workflow Structure Overview, 4. The Inputs Pane, 5. The Outputs Pane, 6. The Parameter Settings Pane, 7. The Monitoring Settings Pane, 8. The Run Log Tab, 9. The Statistics Pane, 10. The Run Screen does not allow to edit the workflow directly, but you can double-click any of its blocks here to open the Blocks Configuration dialog. You can also open the Workflow Configuration from the Run Toolbar to make changes in settings. Note that these functions become disabled while a workflow is running. The Inputs pane shows top-level workflow inputs if they were added in the workflow configuration. You can specify input values here. The Outputs pane similarly shows top-level workflow outputs. Output values are shown here after you run the workflow. This is useful for simple results, while a full featured data analysis is available in Analyze. The Statistics pane displays information about the progress of workflow runs execution time, and block statistics. When you start a workflow, the bottom pane automatically switches to the Run Log tab. The log contains various diagnostic messages. If the workflow contains blocks that print to screen, their screen output is also redirected to the Run Log. In particular, it allows to print workflow results to the log if you prefer. Note that the Run Log is not a copy of the P7 console log. Each workflow tab contains its own run log, which shows only workflow messages, and the console shows all application messages. P7 allows created, predefined, or so called run ready workflows. Workflow schematic can be locked with the ability only to change global inputs and parameters. Run ready workflows can be deployed into product development process, for example, for less experienced users. While a workflow runs, P7 captures all data appearing on the monitored ports and stores it to the project database. This data does not show up and run, but can be post-processed and analyzed. Note that the project database is updated in real time, so you can start a workflow and immediately switch to Analyze to begin working with intermediate results. The Analyze screen is used to post-process workflow results. 
The screen also becomes available only after you open a project. The Analyze screen contains the Project Database pane 1, which shows all monitored data. The tab bar 2 showing all open reports also contains buttons to open, save, and add new reports. The Report Toolbar 3 with various analysis and plotting tools. The Main Editing Area 5. To begin editing a report, you can select some database records in the Project Database pane and drag them to the editing area. P7 creates a copy of this data in the report and automatically formats it to a table. Note that all workflows in a project share the same project database, though they write results to different records. Every report, in turn, can access entire project database. This allows you to create reports that combine results from different workflows while keeping the source data organized. A report is a bit more than a collection of tables and plots. Let's see the ready report. Each report has its own data storage, the Report Database. You can view the Report Database using the Data Series pane 1, toggled from the Report Toolbar 2. It contains a number of 1D arrays called Data Series, which are automatically formed from multidimensional project database records when you add data to the report. The Report Database works as an intermediate data layer. Data Series remember their sources in the Project Database, so normally a report can be updated automatically at any time. The Toggleable Issues pane in Analyze shows warnings related to report configuration. For example, missing data sources, mistakes in plot settings, and other potential problems. This introduction does not aim to explain every function in detail and provides only the most essential information. To get familiar with P7, it is recommended to complete the introductory tutorials, which you can find in P7 Help. That's it. Thanks for your attention, and goodbye.